So yesterday I went to see Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. I can't say I'm a massive fan of the character. The first film was one of the weakest in the MCU. Uh, but I do enjoy it when he pops up in other movies. He's always a fun supporting character. And this one is directed by Sam Raimi, who is a consistently entertained director, who hasn't made a film in years. So on the whole, I was pretty much looking forward to it. And I was not disappointed. It's a fun movie with plenty to enjoy. Not one of the best MCU movies, but not one of the worst. Uh, there's going to be spoilers from now on, so watch out if you don't want to know. Uh, the very start of the film is particularly unusual. Uh, it throws you right in the middle of an action scene, with two characters you've never seen before. One of them is a version of Doctor Strange, but not the one we know. Uh, one of them is uh, America Chavez, who we've never seen before. They're in a weird environment, very much like that of the Doctor Strange comics of the 60s, only much more colourful and detailed. It did make me wonder if they'd accidentally put the wrong reel in the projector, but then I remembered it's all digital nowadays. But then the action moves on to the regular Doctor Strange, who's still trying to get over his ex-Christine. It was six years ago, man. Move on! Uh, we then get the first big action sequence as Strange and Wong fight a big alien starfish creature. It's great, but unfortunately it's a bit similar to the end of the Suicide Squad movie, where they fight a giant alien starfish called Starro. It's not exactly the same creature, it's smaller with more tentacles, and it serves a very different function, being the first monster of this movie, as opposed to the climax of the Suicide Squad movie, though it's different enough to not be too distracting. After that, Strange visits Wanda Maximoff, the Scarlet Witch, and we get the first big surprise. If you'd only seen the teaser trailer, as I had, you'd have thought that this movie would have had them working together to fight some menace from beyond the multiverse. But actually, she's the bad guy. And it makes sense if she's seen one division. Uh, you'll see how her experience is there, because they've pushed her over the edge. But anyone who hasn't might be left wondering what's going on. There's a brief attempt to show what Wanda lost, but they might as well have had Elizabeth Olsen turn to the camera and say, subscribe to Disney Plus. For the full story, it's... Anyway, Wanda kills a bunch of people, which is way beyond what she did in WandaVision. And Strange in America escape through the multiverse. Given the title of the movie, I was expecting more of a road trip through countless parallel universes, Rick and Morty style, where we get to spend 5-10 minutes in each. But this sequence is really all we get. I'm sure it'll be a lot more enjoyable to watch it back on digital or Blu-ray. So you can pause every few seconds and spot all the easter eggs. But in the cinema you can't really do that. So it's not that good an experience. In fact we only get to spend time in one parallel world with any level of detail. And that looks much like ours, only with more plants. The main draw is that it hosts the Illuminati. Which for any fan of the Marvel movies is a real treat. We get to see Captain Peggy Cart from What If in live action. Lily Atwell obviously relishes any chance to come back and play the character. She does it very well, so it would be great if she had more than a cameo next time. Uh, Patrick Stewart gets to play Charles Xavier one more time, and we get to see him die for about the third or fourth time. I think this version of Xavier is meant to be the one from the animated series, as he has the big yellow wheelchair and snippets of the theme tune player as he wheels on. And Reed Richards shows up. For some reason he's played by John Krasinski. I don't know if they tried to get Owen Grufford or Miles Teller back to play Mr. Fantastic again. All the movies they played him in weren't really good. But they did bring back the guy who played Black Bolt in the Inhuman series. Which is not just one of the worst superhero TV shows ever made, it's one of the worst TV shows ever made in any genre. He's obviously a lot better in this movie. Because it couldn't be much worse. I guess there would be a lot of fans speculating what would John Grudinsky be like with Reed Richards? And he would get the answer. He'd, he'd be pretty good. But he'd do a good job. So, there you go. Would have had more weight if you'd already seen the actor playing Reed Richards in at least one other movie. It's still a great sequence, but it just falls a little bit short. Anyway, speaking of different versions of familiar characters, we get to see three versions of Doctor Strange in this movie. The ponytail one at the start is basically the same as our version, but towards the end of the movie we do get to see an evil version of Doctor Strange. And Benedict Cumberbatch clearly relishes the chance to play him. In fact, it's quite similar to the evil Doctor Strange we saw in What If, only with a different backstory. So you don't have to see that series. The evil Strange serves as a personification of our Strange's worries about what will happen if he succumbs to the lure of the Dark World, as happened to the version of him in the Illuminati universe. And by the end of this movie, we're still left wondering exactly how far towards that he's gone. Uh, apart from that, the main emotional arc for his character is getting over his feelings for Christine. Rachel and Academy does have a lot more to do in this movie than the first one. But her character struggles to be more than just the love interest. They don't have much chemistry, and there's never that moment where you think, Oh great, he's had another Christine, they can finally be together! Which is perhaps what you were meant to think. But it never really lands. At least by the end of the movie, it seems he's finally moved on. 
and the mid credit scene we actually see Thrawn showing off is clear. His love interest from the comics. I had been thinking they might be saving the character for the sequel, uh, but uh, there she is, and Charlize Theron's a good actress. Appropriate age for Cumberbatch. I approve, if uh, what it's worth. Um, Elizabeth Olsen gets to be the first real hero turned villain in the MCU. If you've followed her character over all the movies and TV shows, then you'll see she's still a sympathetic character. Even when she's killing hundreds of people. And if this is the end of her story, she certainly goes out on a high. At the same time, we get the first appearance of Sochi Gomez, I think that's how you pronounce it, as America Chavez, and she makes for a perky and likeable sidekick. Uh, though for most of the second half of the movie, she's sidelined being kidnapped by one person or another. Uh, but the actress is only 16, and they're clearly setting her up for appearances in lots more movies and TV shows, so I'm sure she'll develop along the way. Sam Raimi brings his usual directorial style to the movie, and showing it rattles along at a fine pace, with some great action scenes and unusual camera angles. In fact, he's probably more suited to this material than he was to the Spider-Man universe. It gives him plenty of opportunity to embrace his love of horror. Lots of jump scares, demons and monsters. Uh, there's nothing as strong as the Evil Dead movies. But any kids watching will certainly get a bit of a fright, uh, particularly in the scenes with the zombie Doctor Strange towards the end. Overall, it's a good solid movie, plenty of action and horror, but probably more for the hardcore Marvel fan than for the casual viewers. The ending says Doctor Strange will return, and I'm um, actually quite looking forward to the third instalment. With Doctor Strange and Clea starting their relationship, it could be more of a supernatural rom-com, which would be different enough to be very interesting. That's all from me. Uh, please like the video if you enjoyed it, and subscribe if you want to see more from me. I'm currently doing a video for every episode of Moon Knight, uh, with sketches and characters, not just talking to the camera like this. So check it out if you like. Hope to see you soon.